kind of the, the typical process when we look at a, an SEO audit for a website, we look at a handful of different areas. This is, of course, kind of an abbreviated version of that. Uh, but we do look at the technical SEO of it, how Google is able to find the site. We look at the content of the site. Are you, you know, directly kind of appealing to the, the audience that you want coming to the site? And then, of course, search engines from that as well. Uh, we look at the off page of it to see what kind of links are being earned to the site. Are they impactful to, to everything that's happening on the site and to your uh, organic keyword rankings? And then kind of a fourth area we look at is the competitor space. What other competitors out there? Are you competing with, you know, huge elephants in the search space? And is it just not even possible to compete with them? Or is there something else going on that, that could be affecting how your brand's doing? So just wanted to kind of preface that with a few things. Of course, like I said, this is more of the abbreviated version of this. Uh, absolutely. We look at uh, a wide variety of uh, different uh, factors and um, uh, across on page, off page, uh, uh, competitors, how your technical performance is doing, how your messaging is doing. Uh, so that's something that uh, we'll try to cover you know, as many bases as we can. Um, so Jeff, uh, actually going to uh, uh, have to skip forward uh, to um, uh, uh, ec-itsolutions.com. Uh, I think we have a uh, Christian here on the call, so I will uh, unmute him. Uh, uh, hello, Christian. How are you? Good. Thank you, Kevin. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Uh, so yeah, we're excited here to uh, you were the first website uh, on our list. Um, so I'll hand it over to uh, Jeff and uh, be really excited to uh, yeah talk about your uh, your website. Thanks, Kevin. Awesome, sounds good. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Um, so Christian, do you want to give us just a little bit of background on your site? Uh, obviously, you guys it looks like you guys are in the IT space, but just maybe a little bit, a little bit, excuse me, a little bit of background on the business. Sure, Jeff. Thank you. It's pretty much a, a, a small business that I uh, started in August uh, 2020. Um, it focuses pretty much on uh, the digital space, uh, on uh, websites, online stores, mobile apps, and digital marketing as well. Um, the, the, the site currently has no information about clients, but um, I'm, I'm working uh, on updating the website, including uh, portfolio, uh, client testimonials, as well as a blog section so that I could Oh, I think we may have lost you. Uh, Christian, are you still with us? Your, your audio that. dropped. Huh. Well, well, that's okay. Uh, I think I think we're okay to go ahead and proceed. Regarding, he's he's still here. Maybe he can still hear us. Sure. Yeah, I, I think we're okay to move forward. So, kind of the initial view of this site, what Christian was just explaining, where they're in the IT space. So, when I initially look at this, um, what I would probably want to look for here is to see where are you located. What's that? That's going to be the biggest thing. If this is a local business where you're you're focused on a local group of customers, you want to make sure that it's clear directly from the homepage, the first page that a lot of people are going to start on, that you are showcasing where you're located. And then of course that you're in IT services, that's going to be the biggest thing to see here. So if we look at, I'm just going to kind of browse at the, the heading tag here, just to get an idea of how this is looking. So awesome. I love seeing that, that, that first heading, then when you land on the page is wrapped in an H1 tag. There's a lot of, a lot of times where we see with clients where they've got a lot of text on the page. Sometimes that text is formatted in a paragraph tag, or maybe it's an H2 tag. Maybe it's something that's not directly an H1 tag. For most sites, you want to make sure that you have a unique H1 tag for each and every single page. That way you can kind of give Google what's the main topic of this page, what's the location of it, you know, some different elements of that. And then as you get into some kind of inner services pages, you're, you're also kind of doing that same thing where you're highlighting what the main topic of, of the page is for that. So looking pretty good there as we kind of scroll through the page here. I know we get into some uh, successful projects. It looks like we've got some services. This is an area where it looks like we've got um, some information about services. One thing I would definitely recommend here is linking internally linking into your different services pages. So 
That's a great way for Google when they land on this site, Google or Bing or any search engine, when they land on the site, when they land on the homepage and go to crawl it, they want to see, okay, what are these links that are going into other pages? If you can link into all of your other pages and kind of give Google that direction, that sort of map of how your site lives and or how your site exists and where all these different pages live on the site, that's going to be just a much easier thing for, for them to understand. And then I know we've got some uh, some services pages up here in the navigation, but even from the homepage, it'd be good to link into these separate pages here. Um, and as I scroll here, yep, we've got a link into to find out about more of our services. So that's going to go over to the, the parent page here. But again, um, if you're really trying to get some some links pointing into some of these pages that would be more more beneficial so something like maybe like a learn more link here or um kind of expanding on that maybe like learn more about our web services just something along those lines that would help the user find more information and help the search engine find more information so as we scroll along here we've got some information about your mission looks pretty good i mean a, a lot of the times when we look at um pages that are like about us or why choose us that's your op opportunity within the content to kind of have your own voice and, and make kind of a, a different statement there about what your business does and what it's how it's different from other businesses potentially in your area um so that's always a good good spot to do something like that and then link into something like a ys page which you've got in the navigation here um as we're scrolling through um we've got some what i would call kind of trust factor content this is also good to showcase users this not necessarily search engines but users of what kind of services you guys use what kind of technologies you guys use so always good to have that um again this could present another sort of content opportunity here where you could just further expand on some of these services if you wanted to talk about you know what you guys do with let's say google i'm, I'm assuming this is probably google workspace microsoft 365 some of those different services if you wanted to expand on that and, and showcase kind of why those are important you know sometimes it's great to show this stuff, but if you could have more information tied to it, not only is that good for a search engine, but it's also good for a user who's who's maybe just discovering you for the first time. Um, it looks like we've got some more copy here. So um, some of this copy I'm sure is, is primarily generated for search engines. So good to have that. I would say um, probably one thing to maybe add in here is a couple of different paragraph headers, kind of split the content up a little bit more, just kind of show Google here's what this primary topic is, and then here's maybe a secondary topic, a tertiary topic, stuff like that, where it all just kind of relates back to, to what you do and, again, your service location. And then we've got, looks like a call to action down here in the footer, and then that looks like that's pretty much the homepage here. Um, so one other opportunity that I see here, um, kind of going back into the idea of the services pages and the internal linking and how that's really important. You do have opportunity here to kind of build out your footer and do do a little bit more of that. Maybe have a services section, maybe repeat again the different technologies that you guys use, something that's going to be a little bit more impactful there. Um, that way, when a user lands here, even a search engine, we've got those kind of boilerplate areas in the navigation and in the footer where you have links pointing into these different pages. So that's, that's always going to be something that's super helpful. Um, um, if I jump into one of the interior pages here, so again, I, I see kind of an opportunity. Let me just check this and see if we've got our main heading tag here. And so, yep, looks like that's wrapped in a heading tag. So it looks good there from a, a technical perspective, so to speak. And again, super high level technical stuff, but just good to see, okay, that's wrapped in a heading tag. The one thing that, again, I would say that I see is kind of absent from from the content from the site here is really a service area what your location is you know anybody landing here i i'm sure you you can offer services to anybody anywhere in the country but it would be good for search engines to understand where you're located and kind of you know maybe putting that city name into your title tags into your description tags your header tags um like a heading right here like consulting services for your location you know something like that is going to be a, a good way to help google understand this is where you're located and this is what we're you know what who we can kind of help with what what those different types of business are and and the location that they're in so just a uh, quick recommendation there it looks like you've got pretty good copy going on here um again i think just focusing that on who is your ideal customer and then how do you speak to them a little bit more directly there um, just clicking through here, just checking a couple of other things. It's always important, of course, to make sure you don't have any broken links on the site. That's that's going to be definitely important. Um, we try to avoid anything with like internally redirected URLs where you don't have a ton of content on the site right now. I know you said you're, you're working on starting a blog where you don't have a ton of content on the site right now. That probably won't pop up too much. But as you continue to build content and grow the site, you just want to make sure, okay, you're running checks on the site, you're making sure that links are working, you don't have any issues with internal redirects or, you know, something that's landing a person on a 404 page, you just want to make sure 
that's not happening. That's not good for a user experience, but then it's also not good for, for Google. Um, so all things considered, I say you're, you're on the right path here. This is, of course, just kind of looking at the, the key on page kind of stuff here that we look at. There's, there's more to kind of review here, of course, getting into the content, seeing like what is that content gap, understanding who some of your competitors are, whether they are local or national, that's going to be helpful as well. Um, and then really see, you know, what's what's going on from a page speed page speeds perspective, excuse me. Um, seeing how fast is the site, is it that good experience that Google's looking for? There's several different tools out there. We like to look at uh, like page speed insights to see how quick is the site loading? Is it um, an experience that Google wants? And, and they're of course gonna promote a site that is a little bit faster than other sites out there. So we wanna make sure, okay, just the, the page speed looks good. That's gonna be fast enough for people. Um, and then of course, the people that are able to get around in, in a way that they want to. And then kind of the third area that I would definitely take a look at here is what's happening from an off-page perspective. I, I don't have that information up right now, of course, but um, trying to understand, okay, where are you getting links from? If this is a local business, do you have different citations that are pointing to it? Do you have, uh, let's say a Google My Business page set up, or excuse me, Google Business Profile set up, a Yelp page, being local, um, some of those key citation areas where you can get a link pointing back, you've got your business information repeated here. Um, that's going to really help for a lot of local businesses. Anyone we chat with today, you know, that's that's an important step to take with SEO for, for local businesses, of course. So um, all things considered, though, I think you're on the right track and creating a blog that's going to be beneficial. That's going to add more content. Um, definitely recommend kind of trying to see from an IT perspective what, what is out there, what are some common questions that are people asking, and then that would be a great area to expand on your content and write some new content for that. So awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Uh, um, Christian, not sure if you're uh, still with us, if you uh, are, uh, um, do you have any uh, uh, any questions at all? I don't, I don't actually think uh, Christian is, uh, is with us anymore. That's, uh, uh, oh, sorry. I realized, uh, Christian, are you still with us? All the time, but I'm here. Oh, sorry, you. awesome. Yeah, I think we lost your audio earlier and then and then unmuted you, but uh, sorry, then muted you, but I just unmuted you again. Yeah. Good, good. Thanks, Kevin. No, I, I am here and I do appreciate the, the input. Uh, we, we are also, you know, um, studying on social media. And so, okay. yeah, that's the next stage. Uh, the, the site is going through an update uh, with a better footer and the input that uh, Jeff provided is, is taken into account as well. So thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, and that, that social media piece doesn't have, you know, necessarily a direct effect on SEO, but we know that there are some like social signals out there that it's good to have different profiles out there that just kind of helps validate what your business is, where you're located, some of that key information. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, of course. Well, awesome. thank you so much, Christian. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, next up, we are going to go with, uh, oh, I hope you didn't uh, drop out of the the call. Uh, this going through, uh, no, he's here. Uh, it is going to be another Chris, uh, Chris Robinson of, um, uh, the website efficientguy.com. So why don't I share my screen here? Chris, uh, are you uh, with us? Chris Robinson? I think you did it to me again, Kevin. Oh, sorry. No, Chris uh, Chris Robinson should be on the call here. Hello, Chris. Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, we can hear you. Uh, I think your volume might be a little low, or maybe my volume is low. <laughs> oh, well, <clears throat> thank you. Um, as you can see from my webpage, I am a wedding officiant and I issue marriage licenses and uh, just love to get some feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how long have you had your website, Chris? Oh, 16, 17 years. Okay. I was gonna say, uh, has it always been uh, on uh, WordPress? Yes, it has. Okay. Well, one thing I love the amount of content uh, that's on your website. I'm just scrolling through it here right now. So all this, uh, I'm gonna, I'll start things off here, uh, Chris, um, uh, and then I'll, I'll hand it off to, uh, we'll, I'll hand it off to Jeff, and he can, he can give his insights as, as well once uh, uh, after a couple of minutes. Um, 
One thing, uh, one thing I noticed, I think where you could really potentially benefit from is the the layout of your your WordPress theme. So what my first impression, what struck out to me on your homepage was it's really almost structured like a blog. It's a lot of there's a a table like a blog post almost. There's a table of content uh, and um, you know have to scroll down to different um sections and it's it's a lot of it's a lot of scrolling and the content isn't i think segmented as well as it otherwise could be um one issue i see in particular in this regards is um you have all this great content here about uh being a celebrity wedding efficient or serving different california counties um and all of this information uh isn't it's all on the same URL. It's all on your homepage. Um, so uh, this doesn't provide the way Google crawls content to go on search engines to help you rank for different information is they will segment content by separate URLs. So if as much as possible, each individual page could be about its own topic, that way you can start to dominate the topic and then it will be much easier for you to rank for the different perhaps like sub services that you offer so perhaps having instead of just putting all of this content in a, a long scroll on your homepage, um like confidential marriage license explained to have perhaps a dedicated uh web page about it uh uh, with its own URL and then adding that into your navigation about here's, you know, the ultimate guide for uh, confidential marriage licenses in California sort of thing, or uh, whatever the, the keyword research tells you the best, perhaps the best title to call it. Um, that could really help you, you rank for, for certain terms. The one thing I like about your current uh, WordPress uh, template is actually performs well from a, a page speed perspective. I, I think, um, uh, having looked at uh, your your page speed test, how fast a web page loads in a browser uh, is definitely um, a ranking factor. Um, I think that speaks to the the relative minimalism of your your web page layouts. Um, I don't think you have to deviate from that minimalism. I think one big step could be um, uh, building out. Your, I mean, if you got you've got your services pages up, kind of up here in the header. How can you better um, merge or create merge what you have uh, from the from the homepage into different services pages, and then perhaps create more of a um, a, a user friendly uh, uh, navigation to help people find the information they're they're looking for. So, how could you merge the existing information from your homepage onto your your services pages or create net new services pages and uh, update um, the, the navigation to make it really intuitive for your users. Um, one thing I like about the blog is that you have blog categories as well. Um, uh, that's always a good start. That kind of helps to show Google search. Uh, here are the different categories that we specialize in. Um, I might want to consider looking into what your competitors are doing, uh, what other what topics are they ranking for, and um, how can you optimize your your categories in the first place. Um, so, for example, um, as much as like a, a category called funny, uh, I think could be great for people once they're already on your website and they could find funny things about uh, funny blog posts about different weddings, uh, and those could be good for going viral on social as well. Uh, it's not uh, um, it's not a category that really tells Google search algorithms. It doesn't tell anything to Google search algorithms about um, the services you provide or what your unique selling proposition is. Um, I'll pass it on over to uh, Jeff now as he has any comments. Um, uh, Jeff, do you want to? If you have, do you have the website open? Uh, I could switch I, the screen over to you. I do. Yeah, I can go oh, ahead awesome. and share here. Let me just pull this up for you, Chris. Uh, so awesome. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. 
Perfect. So kind of just to piggyback off of what Kevin was saying, I think structurally it could definitely be built out a little bit differently. Um, when I look at this, I immediately kind of see, okay, this is the WordPress layout from, from a handful of years ago, whereas a lot of WordPress sites are updated to maybe include like a bigger header, kind of some different images that are showcasing, maybe you at some weddings, some different wedding venues, stuff like that, where it's it's not even necessarily just an SEO thing, but it's a user experience thing where you're you're showcasing what you do and it's it's clear um, who you do that for and where you do it. I think that's that's a big piece here. So kind of restructuring some of the site a little bit there. Um, that could have some implications on the, the page speed itself. I know uh, Kevin mentioned the page speed is looking pretty good. That's that's a B, which is by today's standards is really good depending on the content and different animations, things that you have going on there. So that looked that actually looked pretty good. So as you were to restructure that, you just want to check that and make sure um, you're keeping keeping pace with those different uh, page speed page speed metrics that Google looks for. Um, but overall, I'd say, you know, looks like you've got a lot of good content. It just probably needs a bit of restructuring going on here. So kind of just to piggyback off of what Kevin said, I, I think that's kind of kind of the main thing there. Um, one other piece, as I mentioned, we we like to look at kind of the off page to see what's happening here. So you mentioned you have you've had your site for a very long time. It definitely is reflected like that in the the off page piece of it with how many links are pointed to it. You've got 862 different domains pointing to the site, um, about 5,200 backlinks, tons of traffic coming to it. So it has served its SEO purpose. I'd say it definitely has that sort of value to it. It's just you know what could be a better user experience, and that could lend itself to um, conversion experience, you know, how, how many people are actually converting from this site when they find you online, um, that could kind of benefit from all that. But from an off-page piece, I'd say you're looking pretty good. It's mostly just on-page, probably a little bit of restructuring, kind of rethinking, you know, how do we how do we bring this to, to 2022? And um, another quick thing that I noticed that I would maybe recommend against is something like, um, anytime I see some of these icons, especially a Google Plus icon, that immediately, I, I look at that and think, that site may, might be a little bit dated. Maybe the business isn't still in business. Google Plus hasn't been around for a little while. So it's okay. it's one of those things where I look at that and I think like, oh, maybe this is an older site. It's not in business anymore. So just something something to consider there. But I, I would definitely say um, kind of a, a refresh would be a good path for this. OK, I appreciate that. That that all is very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, um, uh, all right, two down, three more to go. Really excited about uh, the next one here. Um, so I'm going to bring on uh, Tony of buildyoursite.com. Uh, Tony, we should, uh, uh, you should be able to talk if you can unmute yourself, uh, uh, if you're here. How are you? I think he might be muted. Yes, uh, I gave him permission to to unmute himself, uh, but uh, he might. Uh, oh, Tony, are you here now? Oh, not quite. Well, he's in the he's in the call, but uh, uh, Tony, if you ever uh, jump back on quickly, uh, you you can talk if you are uh, uh, you can unmute yourself. Um, I'm, I'll go ahead, Tony, and, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you don't have a mic. I don't want to hold that against you. Maybe you are only, maybe you only have the option to, uh, uh, view in on the screen. So go ahead and, you know, take a look at your website quickly. So your website is buildyoursite.com. Uh, I'll share my screen here quickly. Uh, beautiful. Awesome. So, uh, Tony, I'm actually going to assume that you yourself, uh, from your your website services, that you are a uh, uh, a digital marketer and uh, um, uh, a, a web designer yourself. So, um, I I see a lot. Of, you know, Tony, a lot of great things you're doing on your website. Um, a few things that that struck out to me, and and then I'll I'll hand it off to to Jeff as well, and he can um, kind of give his his feedback afterwards um is it it looks like this site is really you know heavily kind of dependent on 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 php and uh if i don't know tony if, if php if that's a, a coding language that you're comfortable in maybe that's why you built your own website uh um so much on 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 php um it's i know this is a little bit technical but kind of this leading off with it because it's the first thing i noticed uh, even this um uh, I think looking at your your services here, and then uh, I go to view marketing services. 
um, brings you down to a separate PHP page, uh, and then try to click down to the different subsurfaces, if you will, and then it kind of brings me down to a scroll. Um, so this kind of is similar to uh, what we were talking about in the previous website about um, maybe this kind of building out your services pages. So it's, it's not this kind of a jump down to a scroll from a parent page. Um, but also I think coming back to my original point about um, building all your pages on PHP, I think um, at least in my opinion, uh, I'm sure maybe Jeff has an opinion as well. I think it, it is becoming increasingly a, a difficult website technology uh, to uh, perform well on, on Google. Um, and uh, so that's maybe one of the first things I would notice that this kind of ties into the functionality of how you're talking about all your services. Um, I think if you offer search engine optimization, page search management, Facebook ads and retargeting, sales funnel optimization, all these things, how great would it be if you just had dedicated, you know, services pages um, for, you know, for each of these, for each of these items. Um, if I wanted to learn more about the, the, what you offer in page search management, and I'm sure you're great at managing, you know, Google ads for clients. Um, uh, but I kind of like just a few bullet points on a page, um, about the different kind of subservices, uh, of what you're, of what you're offering for page search. Um, I, I, I can't help but wonder if a lot of your competitors are providing, you know, more detailed information to help nurture leads when they get to their websites, uh, and again on dedicated pages to help rank for for Google search as well. Um, and uh, again, this comes back to the 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 technical functionality of of the website. But um, I think when you're you're hiding such, uh, making it difficult to find such important information about plans and pricing and FAQs. Um, uh, you're just making it more difficult for users to find that information, especially because it's all kind of scattered on the same page. Uh, and as well, um, this is the actual functionality of it. Uh, so those are um, those are a few things I would say. One other thing I'll notice that before I pass it off to, uh, to Jeff, um, I will say I do like how, um, uh, 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 there's no ambiguity right from above the fold on your homepage about what it is you do. I find that a lot of websites, I get to the homepage and I just want to uh, figure out right, what, right away, what is it you do? What is the benefit you're gonna give me? And you, you accomplish both of those tasks you know, right away. So I love that about your messaging. Um, I think when I go a little bit more further down the funnel towards the middle of the funnel, um, it looks like you offer hosting services, so that's great. I go to click on uh, hosting page and it says, uh, gives me the option to find out details about the two different options, shared cloud hosting or private cloud server. And other than, you know, individual and very short sentence each underneath the, the images here, there's, um, uh, you know, I have to, you know, go right away to almost like a sales page, um, that this to figure out what is the what is the best option for me. Um, so I think maybe if there's more kind of content on your website that serves as an in between uh, to really talk about, really establish yourself as an expert in a website hosting and the different benefits and downsides of shared cloud hosting versus private cloud server. Um, even before people get to the the conversion page and how you are updating your your website flow and your website funnel accordingly, I think stuff like that could be really helpful. Um, Jeff, I'll pass it on to you in case you have uh, any uh, any additional insights. Perfect. Uh, um, I'll uh, stop my screen share there as well. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you guys should be able to see my screen now. So again, to probably kind of piggyback off a couple of things Kevin said here. So. Um, one of the things that we looked at in the very first site is what is that main heading tag? Does it kind of announce who you are, where you are? I think one of the, the first things that I see here is the, the main header is creative solutions equals amazing results. Important. I think that's that's important to the customer to know or to the, the end user to actually see this. But what does that actually mean? What is, does that help Google understand this? So maybe implementing something like web design, web development, something into that, that main heading there, that could be beneficial for Google to understand, okay, what is this all about? Um, I think that could definitely be helpful. Um, with what Kevin was saying, where this looks like the site is built on PHP, 
Um, I could foresee a handful of issues there. I, I know, um, looks like it's not connected to a CMS. It doesn't back into WordPress unless there is um, some other customization happening there. But that is something where um, PHP is good for a handful of things. Like it's definitely what, what WordPress is based on. That's that's the main thing there. But having URLs that are ending in .php, I would say that's, that's probably an issue to consider. Like if we jump over to, let's say the about us, so about us, about .php. I mean, that's, that's something that, I would say is, is kind of from the past, from a long time ago, where you would see URLs end in .php or .html. Um, that's something where we don't t tend to see that too much anymore. You just want to have a clean, direct URL to whatever it is. So um, could be something to, to update there and, and update the URL structure, but that's that's definitely one thing I would recommend. Um, I did notice as I was kind of clicking through some different pages. So this is the, the main landing page for, for web design. The first thing that I noticed here is in the title tag itself, um, it's actually just repeating that URL. So that will not unfortunately give Google a, a good understanding of what that is or even what the service is, where you're located, anything like that. You want to make sure that that's in your title tag, in your description tag. Um, I know some of that stuff is is kind of lower down the, the list of priorities, but that, those are ranking factors and those are definitely important for websites to get ranked in Google. So one thing that I noticed there, and then just in general, the, the kind of depth of the content here where I'm landing on, this is a, a dedicated landing page for web design. It's in the navigation. I, I believe it's in the footer. Yep, it's down in here in the footer here. Um, we get here and there's two options here. And then we get into a, a basically a CTA here where there's not a lot of information about what you guys do for web design, what you do for, you know, similar services like web hosting, web development, you know, what kind of different platforms or services you use on that, that first site that we looked at where we saw the different services like Microsoft, Google, you know, the different kind of IT services um, that we saw with Christian site. That's where I would recommend something like this, where we could showcase like, hey, we work in Magento or WordPress or different kind of platforms that you guys use. That would be good to not only for the user here, but also just to kind of give Google a different understanding and context to the site as a whole here. So definitely some content opportunities here, but I, I think one of the biggest things that I, that I see and agree with Kevin on is that ending those URLs in .php, you want to make sure that those are just clean URLs and just, just easy to see there. Um, kind of taking a step back again to, to a couple of the, of the other sites that we looked at, um, I don't really see much of a local focus here. I know I saw on the footer that you guys have an office in West Sacramento. Hello from, we started in Fair Oaks, so hello from there. Um, looks like you guys have an office there. You've got an office in um, Austin here, but there's not really a lot of information to say like web design Austin or web design company Sacramento or anything like that. That's where I would say you could probably have a local focus, maybe get into some additional content there. Um, we like to kind of see sometimes some different location pages to where if you wanted to, let's say have content to cover all of Sacramento, you could say, web design Sacramento, web hosting Sacramento, you know, a lot of different pages to kind of cover those different areas and locations. That would be a great opportunity for, for just more content to get into Google for their, um, for those, those different kind of queries. And then that's definitely stuff that we know that people are searching for. So some opportunity there, but overall, um, I think the biggest thing is it, it looks like just the, the PHP stuff. I, I think that could be improved a bit and then expand on the content. Um, one of the quick thing when we've got it, and I know we looked at this on the last site, just, so just kind of seeing kind of the, the history of the site here, what we see from a link perspective. So about 1,300 referring domains, 5,400 links or so. Um, looks like that link perspective is pretty good, but I think there's some on-site issues that are preventing the site from performing at its, its full capability here. So something to, to kind of look into there, but um, I think there's there's a bit to do on that one. I'll go ahead That's, and stop yeah. sharing. And uh, Tony was in the chat confirming uh, that he was here and uh, uh, I correctly guess he uh, did not have a microphone. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, uh, it looks like from the chat that he was uh, uh, very thankful uh, as well. Uh, so Tony, I'm glad that uh, um, glad that this was useful for you. Uh, I see that you have a sister website, onebrand.com. Uh, in the interest of time and uh, kind of going forward with uh, other, other websites on our list, um, uh, yep, yeah, more than welcome to submit uh, additional websites. Uh, or if you have a website here today and we don't have time to get to it today, um, like I said, uh, we, we will be doing another SEO clinic in this matter of a few weeks, uh, and we'll be start promoting that next week. So once that is up, uh, again, just check the crowd content socials and the crowd content website. Um, uh, you can resubmit the website uh, and then uh, be, um, uh, have a great opportunity to, to talk about it then. So uh, three down, uh, two more to go. I'm having a blast. Jeff, how are you doing? Doing great, doing great, this is fun. 
Awesome. Uh, I had already mentioned in the chat just to give everybody a heads up. Uh, uh, the next website uh, will be. Um, oh, now I lost it in my own browser tabs. Unwary Traveler. So I believe this website belongs to Jesse Weber. Uh, so Jesse, you uh, gave your permission to unmute yourself. Are you here? I'm here. Yeah. Thanks. How's it going? Uh, Great, thank you. Awesome. So let me share my screen quickly. Uh, uh, again, uh, I'll start off uh, um, and then uh, pass it off to, to Jeff at the end. But before I do, um, Jesse, how about a little bit of context about your website? It looks like you are a travel enthusiast. Yeah, uh, this is essentially my my personal website, but I want to build it out to be just with more content and more of a hub to also like showcase other work that I've done that's published online. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, uh, may I ask, do you have um, uh, any, uh, is this just like a personal pet project? Is there any uh, monetization opportunities at all? Um, I'm, I'm a professional freelance uh, marketer and writer. So this is, Sort of a combination of a of a personal site and a hub for uh, just showcasing, you know, what my services. Okay, totally. Yeah, no, great. Yeah, so it serves as, like you said, like kind of like a funnel hub to bring people to your your marketing services. Uh, and I think from the personal side of things, um, even if if you're not, you don't have anything to sell directly on this website, it's really just your your travel blog uh, essentially. Um, I think right, yeah, to kind of a portfolio and yeah, just to promote, promote my, my other services as well. Right. Yeah. So I think where it could be a good opportunity is even, um, even this generating traffic that makes the domain itself, you know, valuable if you ever want to uh, sell it in the future or in the meantime, uh, this um, collecting revenue from AdSense. And so this having a pure, you know, content based website if you are giving lots of helpful information to travelers about um uh maybe like travel tips and all that stuff start generating traffic that way um i think that could like content is always valuable even like if there's not a, a directly obvious you know conversion point that that you're looking for like i said even if it's just um you know signing up to have a few ads in your website to, uh, as a secondary revenue stream for you so um I do actually, despite the fact it looks a little, um, uh, I think a little blocky from your, your website redesign, I actually like that about it because it kind of, it looks like an independent traveler's travel blog, if that makes sense. It's, you're not trying to be, you know, a big travel advice website. I love the authenticity of your, your, your website redesign. Um, and I love the tagline, um, Adventure for All. One thing that I might um notice is uh i think from your your blog post number one which i uh uh you have your portfolio here um your journal i love that you have kind of things spread out into destinations how to's stories this is really how you can kind of scale search traffic on on google search by you know and this kind of comes back to a point i made in earlier uh about earlier websites um uh, having these kind of segmented topics kind of tells, I mean, you yourself said you're a marketer. I think you have an idea about this. Tells Google how you are organizing your content. Um, one area where I think I could see some even further rooms of, of improvement on this is how can you kind of expand your, your website architecture to break down maybe destinations uh, into, um, uh, you know, different subcategories. So, you do this here on a different page. Um, and uh, it looks almost as if I, this doesn't, uh, I think, technically count as a, uh, well, I guess it is a technically a separate indexable URL, but it, it's part of the same page in the infrastructure. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity here to really make the, the user flow um, a lot more simpler. Um, I don't like I have to get three or four clicks to get to like a US National Parks page, for instance. Um, 
and then where I think you could also, and so I don't, I think if you update the, the navigation of the architecture earlier in the, the user journey, um, I think that could go a long way in making your, your website architecture less, less complex because you already have the framework here for a great, um, for how you're organizing your content and all these different subcategories. Um, I think also having a topic, like, like different content on these pages to talk about the, so have, like, have content about U.S. National Park Guides, for instance, and put that content, you know, right on right on this page um, instead of this having it be a directory to different blog post links um, that could help these that you're essentially giving content to the parent pages if that makes any sense and then once I get into the individual blog posts um, again I love how authentic they're all written um, I know some of your other blog posts have a lot of internal links which is great um, I clicked on an example unfortunately for you that that didn't um, I think always be mindful of internal links. If you're always um, uh, having, like you have the framework there for pillar pages. So each, like have a blog post that is like a pillar page for like US destinations or uh, Europe destinations. And then in each uh, blog post that is a subcategory, if you uh, will, always link to the parent page. So you could turn them, but sorry, by parent page, I mean pillar page. Um, so that way you could you could turn the pillar page into um, uh, uh, like maybe like an evergreen post. And then you can really get traction there ranking for that. Um, I think off the top of my head, one travel website, they don't do the same thing you do. It's actually an app. Um, they, it's a travel app, but their blog, they set up a pillar structure really well. So it's called pilotplans.com. I'll put it in the chat for you. Um, I think that'd be a great example. You could see how they've structured the 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 architecture of their blog. They um, about the different travel topics as a great example. I think of some of the ideas that I'm talking about, and I'll put that in the chat for you as I pass it off to Jeff. Perfect. And, uh, Jeff, feel free to share your screen as well. Okay. Well, let me just share here. Yes, yeah, so I think Kevin kind of nailed it just with the architecture of the site. That's kind of what I would look for in the navigation where you have those different sections of US travel destinations, you know, maybe Europe or Canada, those different areas to kind of filter in where that content should live. And the way that I would really think about that is if I go into, let's see, into the journal and then into one of your posts here, um, if you've got someone who, let's say they're looking for like different mountains to climb, I don't know if this is just North America or, or specific to, oh, it looks like we've got some content about Alaska. So if, if someone were to land here organically, the one thing that I see off the top is there's no breadcrumbs, there's no path back to wherever this might roll up into a bigger category or maybe just the rest of the architecture of the site. And then without that really being present in the navigation here, that's difficult to find as well. Um, in addition to that, I see where it's just the URL structure here is forward slash journal, forward slash whatever the blog post is. That would probably be better if it was under one of those bigger categories like US destinations or Canadian destinations, you know, something like that, where it's just a little bit more descriptive so the user knows here's where I am, here's where I landed. It's easier to kind of navigate. And then additionally with, with that, when we kind of change the, the URL structure like that, it makes it easier for analysis on the on the SEO side, as I'm, you're probably aware, um, to kind of look at it and say, okay, how are how is this pillar as a whole performing? Can we look at all of US destinations and then understand how is all of that content performing versus Europe destinations, Canadian destinations, whatever those other pillars are. So that would be super ben beneficial to kind of re rework it that way. Um, the other thing that I, I kind of noticed if we just jump back over to the homepage here. So pretty thin in terms of content. I, I think you could have maybe kind of a grid structure here, some different categories about like, here's those different pillars, kind of repeat those. Um, looks like the footer is a little bit thin here. You could have some information. Um, you know, just in general, it seems like it's it's a little bit lacking just in overall content. So um, definitely kind of want to second what Kevin was saying there about the architecture, but then just in, in the content in general, I think that's, that's where you could kind of make some moves. Um, with the blog post itself, if I jump back over to your journal, um, you know, I think kind of looking what, what Kevin, to piggyback off of what Kevin said about internal links, I think that's important. And then also kind of looking at what are your different heading tags here? Are these answering questions that people are commonly asking in Google? Are you using something like an, an SEMrush to kind of understand what those questions are? Are you looking at 
uh, the people also ask section in Google to kind of understand what are people asking and then framing your content to fit that. That's the way that you're really going to win an organic with something like this, where there's, you know, it's a pretty competitive space, but if you can answer some of those questions, even some of those long tail questions, that's going to be super beneficial in your content to, to getting some of that organic traffic. Um, and then, of course, with what we've kind of been doing with some of these, so it looks like, you know, the site speed of the, the homepage at least looks really good. It looks like you're an A right there. As you add more content, continue to revise that, look at that and see, okay, what can I, what kind of improvements can I make? And then if we look at your off page, um, looks like a pretty new site. So you've got about 36 links pointing to, or 36 domains pointing to it, 205 backlinks. Um, if you could, I would say definitely get a link from page one power. That would be beneficial to the site, of course, that would lift it from where it is today to a, a definitely a higher domain rating, but looks like you're on the, the right track, I think, with some architecture changes and then just expanding on the content and earning some more links to it. I think you'd be in a, in a really good spot here. Awesome. Jesse, do you have any uh, questions or, or ideas or anxieties? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, all that feedback makes a lot of sense, and it's good to have that uh, that perspective as I work on building out more content there. So thanks a lot. It's a, it's a grind, but uh, a con like a content heavy website. It's uh, it's all about the work you put into it, and you're you're doing you're doing fine. Uh, where are you? Are you where are you? Where in the world are you right now, Jesse? I'm in Idaho. Uh, is that where you're permanently based? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, so not uh, you're you're in between travel adventures right now, but yeah, you caught me at a relatively boring time, okay. I guess. <laughs> I, look, I look I look forward I look forward to reading about your next adventure. Um, oh, so got one more uh, um, one more website uh, to go, and uh, just have to um, uh, sorry as I browse through the attendee list. Uh, I believe well, I make sure I I get the right person here, so. Uh, I believe it is Mary Jane from Home for the Harvest. So, uh, Mary Jane, you now, uh, yep. How are you, Mary Jane? I'm great. This is very exciting. Thank you so much for, for picking my site. I know it was random, but I am still very grateful. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, no, thank you. Uh, is it Mary or Mary Jane? Mary Jane. Okay, awesome. You do go by Mary Jane. That's great. I'm a big Spider-Man nerd, so this will be easy for me. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the first time you've gotten that, though. But um, so uh, I quickly have your site up now. Um, bear with me. I'll share my screen, and then uh, and then I'll pass off to Jeff after I can kind of do some introductory remarks. Um, so. Uh, why don't you tell us, it looks like you are in the garlic business, Mary Jane. I want to hear more about it. Oh, yes. Well, I'm, I'm actually a blogger. I've just written about gardening for a long time. And I recently started to take my website more seriously. Um, got a proper theme for it and put some ads on it. And uh, I just love to write about plants. Um, but it's time for me to, yeah, take it a little bit more seriously. I love... Um, I just love writing about lots of different kinds of plants. I've tried to organize it about specific kinds of plants. Almost all of my traffic comes from Google search. Um, right. So this is just a new, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to have this new theme because it looks like a real website now, whereas it used to look um, pretty sketchy. <laughs> but uh, it's this less sketchy. This is the new sketchy. WordPress theme? Yeah, so... It, it, you know, I'm not partic particularly tech savvy, um, but uh, so there's probably some like glaring things. I just um, am working with the crowd content um, to build out some topics. You know, I live in Canada and so there's, I'm looking for writers who live, live in warmer climates to write about, you know, pomegranates and other stuff like that. So um, that's where I'm at. I make almost all the money off of display advertising and um, yeah, just let I me know if you that. have any questions. Uh, I do. I see that. Um, uh, no, this is like I think coming back to I had mentioned this as a uh, a revenue stream on the the uh, or an opportunity for a revenue stream in the previous website where um, it's not so much what you're trying to sell on the website. It's like you're just trying to sell content, and then you can like add revenue because I, I I see already a display ads new website which I I think are great. Um, where where in Canada are you based? If you don't mind me asking. I'm in the Okanagan in British Columbia. I'm uh, hello from Vancouver. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, well, Cloud Content is also a, actually a BC-based company. Uh, so uh, they're based. They're 
have an office in Victoria, but I'm I'm personally in Vancouver, and so I love the Okanagan. It's wonderful in the summertime, very hot. <laughs> uh, maybe not so, maybe not ideal for for gardening in the wintertime, but. Uh, um, uh, I do love, I do love the update theme. I love the, um, I, I, I think it's, I think, I, I think you use this word. I'm not hundred percent sure, but it does look very, it does look very cute. It does look very on brand. Um, especially the, the logo. Um, um, I love the tagline above the fold, grow your own garlic. Um, I think you should, I think you should stick with that. I think that's amazing. Um, and I, I love how you're already on, on board with, with, Building up more writers, using crowd content to, you know, build and scale more content, um, and really focus on the the content game. Um, some of the the things I I kind of noticed right off the bat um, is uh, I would actually um, feel like a lot of uh, you come to the homepage and I'm like, okay, grow your own garlic. This is going to be a website uh um well actually i suppose now that now, see this is another thing this is actually a seasonal thing you, you your website isn't only about garlic it's about gardening in general yeah it's just i can't plant very much right now I, for I'm, I'm just realizing that now um i think maybe i think this is a great tagline for this particular campaign um and then so but of course first time coming to your website my first impression is this is going to be a website that's going to give me services to help me figure out how to grow my own garlic. Sure enough, there's a growing guide mm -hmm. here. Um, if your theme accommodates a scrolling header or oh. something where you can rotate, so you can have a mm -hmm. main one, if you will, that's about the gardening in general and about mm -hmm. your search in general. Uh, and then um, maybe uh, it could like scroll to a different header where it could talk about more camp uh seasonal based or campaign based messaging mm -hmm. that you want to promote so it could switch to like an in-season thing and then now you got your grow your own garlic um right. i was as a user kind of coming to your website uh, my first impression is going to be this is a, a, a website that is going to give me a guide about garlic in particular mm -hmm. and then it's yeah. time to start digging into the website more where i realize oh this is about this is a wider scope about more gardening um other than that i thought the tagline was great uh but I, that was just one observation that i had the other thing is about i think your navigation and the links here that you're providing above the fold um right away it's a lot of and this is great you want to have these these pages you want to have your content segmented by the different topics and the different categories vegetable garden and then tomatoes lettuce carrots um i'll say two things i think some of your more um content that is, can be serving different stages of the funnel um are kind of buried under the the this more section and um i think the the architecture and the navigation of everything I see above the fold, as a I, this as a visitor to your website who doesn't have an uh, you know particular agenda, I'm confused about uh, the scope and right. um, and really getting a sense of what is this website all about? Who is it meant for? I see. Am I? Is this advice about uh, gardening? Mm -hmm. Is it? selling me information is it selling products about gardening um uh where does the garlic fit into all of this so it's not so much the content itself but i think it's about how you're organizing and presenting the content and how that relates to the user flow um uh even this um uh the anchor text of the links in your navigation tomatoes lettuce carrots um mm -hmm. uh it, you know it, um, that looks like a grocery list to me. Um, <laughs> if, if, if it's like, um, I think even if you just maybe just change some of the the navigation items, um, be like um, that make it more intuitive about is this advice about uh, is it tips and tricks for how to garden with these things? Um, is it or is it where to buy the best tomatoes? Or is it you know or or is it a product about vegetables that you're selling? You know, I think if um, this, even in the navigation, you're above the fold links, if there's more clarity about that from a messaging perspective and also how you're structuring in WordPress itself, 
uh, the user flow and the user journey. I think that would go a long way. One other, I'll, I'll mention two other things before I pass it off to Jeff. We're already at time, but we'll we'll finish up your your website for you. Um, is you have a pop up here, which looks great. It's clearly um, it's like a lead gen magnet, uh, which I love. Five secrets to a beautiful yard. Um, get the tips now. Um, I'm I can assume from all my years in A/B testing that that's probably a great uh, text to use. Um, I'm not sure what's happening over here on the left-hand side with a scroll bar that says 50% completion. Um, Me neither. <laughs> okay. uh, um, yeah, maybe that's something that um, 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 you can investigate and look into. One last thing I'll say that's probably, um, sorry, Jeff, if I'm stealing your thunder because I'm sure this is something you already looked up. Um, your page speed performance on mobile phones is... Um, 42 out of 100. So this is probably hurting your search rankings for people who are looking up information on their phones. For desktop, you're killing it. But something is going... Uh, something bad. <laughs> going wrong. So I think a lot of it is probably this your images. Um, if you are, like when you're uploading images on your website, this simple things like compressing them. Um, yeah. Which this you can is do something Facebook. I'm... Like I, I, this is something I really get confused about. Like I turn, I use preview to make all my images 1400 pixels wide and then they go, and then I upload them into WordPress and then they go through something called short pixel. And I uh -huh. just must have the settings wrong. Right. Uh, there is another, there's also plugins out there that can automatically compress photos for you. So it's not so much the dimensions of the photo, but the file size of the photo as well. Um, or you can manually do it. There's also free websites that can do it for you as well. Um, so that's that's probably one thing I would I would look into. But there are some WordPress plugins that that can help you with that. And um, I'm sure Jeff uh, has some feedback as well that he can share. Sure. Yeah, I, I would honestly say um, we used to use short pixel a lot for different sites, but we kind of switched over to using a plugin called U. I don't know why it's called U, but there's a lot of just auto compression. It does a lot of WebP stuff with your photos. So definitely a good WordPress plugin to, to kind of check out there. Um, kind of going to piggyback off a couple more things that Kevin said here. So the, the category pages here, what's listed in your navigation, these are obviously the most important pages. This is what Google or a reader, when they first land here, this is what they're going to see and, and kind of dive into. Um, so looking at a couple of these, the first thing I notice here is you've got kind of um, mix match, mis mismatched text here in the title tag. I would I recommend doing everything in just title case for this and make it, again, kind of on point. Like, what is this category about? If this is about sunflowers, let's make sure it's clear that you're going to learn about sunflower stuff here. That it's you know not a product for sale, it's not a guide to this or that, but it's just clear what this category is about. And then as you kind of drill into the category here, um, one thing that we like to avoid is when you have category or any sort of archive page like this, whether it's a category, an, an author page, a tag archive, something like that, um, where it's essentially just search results. It's you're just showing here's a bunch of posts that are related to this category. You're on the right track here by having an initial kind of description about this, but I would build this out to talk a little bit more about what else are we talking about with sunflowers? What is the user going to learn here? What's the search engine going to dis discover here? Aside from here's just a list of a bunch of different posts, kind of explain a little bit more what that is. And as you have more copy here, you can actually expand that to link into other categories, anything related to it. Um, great opportunity to kind of internally link to some of the different pages. So that would be one thing that I would take a look at there. Um, and then just a, a question for you, when you're coming up with, with your different ideas, and of course I'm looking at sunflowers here, um, how are you deciding, like, we want to call this the 10 flora sunflowers for cutting gardens or the 10 branching sunflowers to grow? Like, how are you, you or your writers, how are you guys coming up with your, your topics for this? Um, well, I, I look at my own seeds and my own garden, and then um, I go into a trust and I try to find what people other than me might be calling them. Okay. Um, and then um, I try to, to make like a little group of posts so that, it, it, you know, I can, so for the sunflowers before the season, I wrote all these ones that were kind of um, grouped posts. Okay. So for, for, for like listicles. And then now that I've just um, taken pictures of all the different varieties in my yard, I'm going to go and take, make, you know, 10 more posts about one for each variety. And then I can go back into those um, listicles and, and interlink the varieties was my plan. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was just curious if this was just, you know, we're finding different titles or if there was some research behind it, but that, that sounds like the perfect approach, seeing what are those keywords, what are people searching for, and then kind of building topics out, out accordingly to that. So that, that sounds good. I think that's, that's definitely on the right track. Um, with the piece that Kevin was talking about with mobile being a bit slower, I know one mm -hmm. thing that we've seen with some sites when, when you monetize a site with ads like this with Google AdSense, on the mobile version, if it's really ad heavy, it can be kind of limiting to how the performance is. So that could be something to look at in addition to some of those image things there. Um, could be a, a couple of different things going on there, but could, you know, just in general, kind of improving that performance score on mobile. I'm sure you get a lot of mobile traffic, so that would be definitely beneficial yeah. to Google and to some of your users who are, are finding the site, looking up different things. Um, that would definitely be, be beneficial there. Um, otherwise, I think Kevin kind of nailed some of the main points. The only other thing I would call out here, um, there's some research to say that Google is invested in accessibility. They want to see that everything on a site is, is accessible to people. I would recommend maybe having something related to like an accessibility plugin on here to where people, even if they're on a screen reader or something, they're able to find the content. And the, the reason that kind of stuck out to me is as I look at your navigation here and I, as I hover over some of this, you can almost see where it disappears. Um, yes, not necessarily, not <laughs> right, right, right. Not necessarily, you know, as Google's not going to look at that and say, oh, we're, we're going to ban you for that or anything like that. But just in general, you want to make the site as, as accessible as possible, again, from mobile being fast to it being accessible on a screen reader, you know, any type of different tweaks and things that you can do for that, that's going to be beneficial to not only your users, but to Google too. Amazing. Do you mind sharing the name of that um, accessibility plugin and the U, um, the U image plugin, please? Sure. Yeah, I can pop that stuff into the chat here. There are a, a handful you. of different um, accessibility plugins that are out there. Some of them paid, some of them are free. Of course, the ones that are paid are, are going to have a, a handful of more features. Um, but yeah, let me let me go ahead and pop that into the chat here. And thank you so much. As well as the uh, the image plugin, it's it's literally called U, um, <laughs> which is kind of a weird name for it, but that. it's it does quite a few wonders. It it does a good job. Um, and let me just grab. There's a uh, web accessibly is a great one. And again, that just kind of helps out with uh, making sure that the site's accessible to everyone. Um, and I know something that we we didn't cover here, and I didn't see on a lot of sites. Um, cookie policies. This is kind of becoming a bigger thing. It's of course big in California. It does add a little bit of a trust factor. We try to make sure that any site that we work with, there's a, a cookie policy there as well. If Google sees that and you're informing your users that like we're we're looking at your data, we're collecting your cookie information, um, that is in, in certain ways, there's been tests and, and different metrics to show that that is beneficial to rankings and can help Google actually trust your site a bit more. So just something for, for everybody to, to kind of remember there. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Mary Jane, I also, it's been a, uh, Jeff is the, uh, the, the agency expert, uh, you know, dealing with so many different WordPress websites. It's been a few years since, since I've been on the, the agency side of things. So, but I remember back in my day, one of my favorite plugins was called Smush, which, uh, automatically, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, I'm not sure if you still use that or, uh, uh, I remember I used to use it back in the day all the time. It would um, automatically compress images for you. And also you can set up lazy loading, which is where images wouldn't load on a page until the user scrolls down. Uh, and so that's also something that's really helpful. Yep. And with, with any of these plugins, where whether it's an image optimization plugin or you know anything that's recommended for WordPress, be careful with it. That's the biggest thing is yep. you got to make sure it's compatible with your hosting provider, that it's not going to break other things. So um, always good to, to test that if you have a staging site for, for any of the sites that we looked at today. If there's a staging site involved, test, test the heck out of it, make sure that it works, and then roll it over to your production site. Fantastic. Uh, I would always make sure plugins have a lot of downloads, have good five-star ratings, and that it has a checkbox to it saying compatible with your version of WordPress. Those are the things to look out for. It's all about reputation. If, it's, if, it, if it's, it looks like a reputable plugin, less odds that it will break your website. So that kind of goes for, that's kind of the general advice for all plugins, I would say, for anyone out there who's a WordPress user. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, Mary Jane, lovely to meet you and uh, uh, enjoy the, uh, uh, well, actually the Okanagan's uh, not uh, more than a, 
more than walking distance from where I am, but it's sunny here in Vancouver, <laughs> so I'm going to assume it's sunny in the Okanagan as well. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Okay, That's wonderful. Oh, yes. uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your sunny day then. <laughs> you too. Um, wonderful. So that we're a little bit over time, but we wanted to make sure we got um, we got the, the garlic and the gardening in there. Um, and so thank you everybody so much for attending. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, really puts uh, Jeff and I on our toes, uh, um, trying to, it helps us as well, uh, fine tune our skills, looking at these things on the fly. Um, of course, if you have any content needs at all, uh, content is here for you. Uh, and Jeff and Octave Digital, they will make and optimize, you know, great websites for lots of different types of uh, businesses and service businesses. Uh, and he put his, uh, his email address down there at the bottom in the chat if you have any questions for him. And we hope everyone enjoys uh, their week and uh, a couple weeks away, but have a, a wonderful Halloween. Jeff, do you have any closing remarks? Um, I think that's it. Thanks to everybody for joining. And again, if you had planned for last week and rescheduled for this week, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, we hope you enjoy those two weeks. Awesome. Thanks, guys.